video was originally recorded May 2018 at Tibet House US in New York City. To watch more videos from this program, please visit TibetHouse.us. Okay. Dr. Sharon. I mean, it's Dr. Mark. Dr. Mark. <laughs> Mark. So you all know our, our topic for today, from anxiety, addiction, and depression, to love, relief, and understanding. Oh, my God. <laughs> How lucky. I'm assuming most of us are in the former camp, <laughs> but maybe a little bit reaching towards the uh, love, relief, and understanding. Many of you probably know my work. If you, if you don't, I'm a psychiatrist, psychotherapist. Can you hear me all right in the back? Um, I had the fortunate uh, circumstance to be exposed <coughs> to Buddhism, to learn about Buddhism, to begin to meditate when I was in my uh, early 20s, before I knew very much about anything else. Uh, certainly before I knew very much about Western psychology or what it would mean to be a therapist or uh, psychoanalysis or psychodynamics or anything. So, um, so I had a, uh, uh, a glimpse um, when I was quite young, it now seems, or it didn't seem so then, um, but I had a glimpse of something beyond what I was familiar with that came right away with the Dharma that has um, continued to inspire me throughout um, all the years that have intervened since. And, uh, uh, you know, becoming a psychiatrist and working as a therapist and um, a lot of my personal work and my work as a therapist and my writing work has been trying to make sense of what I glimpsed early on from the Dharma and trying to integrate that with then the learning that came from working with real people and their um, uh, depression and anxiety and addiction and also working with you know, my own versions of those things. So um, you, what, you can look at it as uh, what does Buddhism have to teach psychotherapy or, or even lately I've been reversing it some and uh, uh, trying to talk or think about what uh, the world of psychotherapy has to teach Buddhism because I think it's a mistake to uh, imagine that either of them can do it all and uh, you know for those of us in personalities and with childhoods and uh, conditioned by a uh, hundred years of uh, psychoanalysis we think about ourselves as formed by our early life and need some help with with that also um, but I want to try to talk first for, the, for tonight and for tomorrow about that sense of specialness that I glimpsed from Buddhism early on. And the, the best way, I've sort of collaged a few things together that I want to present to you. Um, and the first uh, came to me uh, a few years ago when I was for three days visiting in Santiago, Chile. And, uh, uh, talking about the kind of stuff that we always talk about together, the, uh, uh, the role of mindfulness and how mindfulness sets up what we call in psychotherapy a holding environment in which we don't have to be afraid of the worst aspects of ourselves where we can learn to hold them with mindfulness, with attention, etc. Uh, and how that opens up and uh, some uh, glimpse, as I was saying already, of some other capacity that's latent in us. And one of the people at this workshop in Santiago brought out a, um, a poem of Pablo Neruda's that he translated for me into English uh, that he thought what I was saying uh, evoked for him. 
And I don't know why he thought that what I was saying evoked the poem, but the poem evokes a lot for me. Um, so I'm going to read it to you. It's just called Poetry. So I'm, I'm equating poetry with the Dharma in, in this uh, poem, reading this poem. And it was at that age, Neruda says, poetry came to get me. I'm not sure, not sure where it came from, from winter or river, not sure how or when. No, they were not voices, they were not words nor silence, but from a street it called me, from night's branches, suddenly among the others, amid violent fires or coming back alone, there it was, faceless, and it touched me. I did not know what to say, my mouth did not know how to name, my eyes were blind, and something beat inside my soul, fever or lost wings, and I went on making my way, solving that burn, and I wrote the first vague line, vague without substance, pure nonsense, pure wisdom of someone who knows nothing, and I suddenly saw heaven scattered and open, planets, throbbing fields, the shadow, wounded, riddled by arrows, fire and flowers, the overwhelming night, the universe. And I, minimal being, drunk from the great starry void, akin, resembling the mystery, felt a pure part of the abyss. I rolled with the stars, my heart unraveled in the wind. Mm. So that's how I felt when I first found the Dharma. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't have said it like that. But I think there's something about poetry, there's something about being able to put words on nameless experience, uh, something about opening to uh, some kind of mysterious uh, aspect of our being that, that Buddhism leads with, that uh, speaks to our sense of confusion, uh, the confusion that comes with having an ego and uh, you know, being born a baby and having to make sense of the world from the age of two or three or whenever consciousness dawns. And, uh, you know, how you have to get yourself together to cope with uh, your uh, internal and external environment and this sense of spaciousness, of mystery, of, uh, you know, uh, one's heart unraveling with the wind and uh, 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 floating in the void, that gets submerged. But there's something in Buddhism that wants, uh, wants us to recontact that, that lets us recontact that. Um, so in terms of what's special about Buddhism, I, I can see it two ways, and I think in a way, those of you who are familiar with Buddhist thought, there's the, uh, the so-called Hinayana path or the Theravada path where you basically see the mind as something that needs to be disciplined, that needs to be brought under control, that's, uh, you know, um, thoughts without a thinker, that where your thoughts are going on and on without you, and your ego is leading you around by the nose kind of thing, and, but that it's possible to gain control by learning mindfulness, by learning to discipline, tame the mind. That's one way to look at it. And then the, maybe what we would call, people will criticize me for this, but we could call it the Mahayana view, where you, one's, um, uh, one's heart uh, one's Buddha nature, uh, one's uh, enlightened self is already present within. We just don't uh, see it or know it or feel it because of our level of uh, ego confusion uh, and our conditioned addiction and anxiety and depression. But if we can make, space, make the right kind of space, uh, it can surprise us and um, uh, suddenly emerge. So. This is from... This video was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, including special tours with Robert Thurman and geographic expeditions, please visit 
to bethouse.us. Tashi Delek, and thanks for tuning in.